for me, being very open about autism mm -hmm. and the self-acceptance and liking myself because of it, not in spite of it, mm -hmm. have made my life go ahead and perhaps that will help some other people. I know not everybody feels they can do that. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to today's Aspie interview with Geraldine Robertson, one of the founding members of ASAN, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. So welcome, Geraldine. Hi, Paul. Thank, thanks for um, volunteering your time today to talk to us all. So um, to start off, do you want to say a little bit about yourself and what you like to, about being on the autism spe okay. spectrum? Well, I'm, I'm a retired teacher and what I like one, it's funny to say what you like because I don't know anything else. Yeah. But I think as my life experiences, I liked bringing disability into the experience of disability into the classroom so that I related to children who didn't normally get on very well at school. But I also really like the autistic people I meet and I love hearing about their passions. Yeah. Awesome. So you've helped found Asan 13 years ago, yes, roughly? Yes, roughly, yeah. Um, so what led you to do that? It was a bit of a disaster. Catherine and Nia and I were members of a national advocate, autism advocacy um, organisation and I was kicked out <laughs> for having rather controversial views okay. and expressing them. <laughs> And Catherine left too, actually she left a little bit before me and we decided that if we were going to advocate for autism we really needed to do it ourselves. And our friend Tony Langdon mm -hmm. was part of that conversation and so the three of us got it started. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you've clearly been passionate about this for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what's your diagnosis story? Um, well, I, I only even heard about Asperger's when I got an autistic child in my class and somebody, and I read up a little bit about it, and then I went to a conference and just by chance went to Tony Atwood's talk on girls and women with Asperger's. Mm. And it was tick a box, tick a box, tick a box. So it was very confronting and just hit me all of a sudden. Um, there wasn't anybody really doing female diagnosis in Tasmania at the time, so I had to get it done through Tony. Which he's in Queensland, I'm in Tasmania. Okay, okay. Yeah, so and it was quite was, a journey. Um, and for some of the other women watching, what were some of those boxes that, that really stuck out for you that you were thinking as you, as you were hearing that? They were things I had never considered different that really some of the things I had considered different, I knew other people had, but when he started saying girls and women with Asperger's often learn about social behaviours when they read um, classic literature, mm -hmm. and I was just this Jane Austen fanatic, and things like that, it was all these little things that, that really made an impact. He actually started his talk by saying, well, at the end of this, you'll think you have Asperger's and you don't. Okay. But I actually did. <laughs> um, and so what was that process of discovery like for you? It was very confronting. I knew that I was different when I was five and by the time I was seven I was reading, my, my mum was a nurse and I was reading her medical books to try and find out what it was that was different. Mm -hmm. And I all my life thought if I could just find out I would get a pill or medication oh, okay. and it would make everything better. And so initially there was a shock, well, oh, there's nothing I can do and it's not going to get better. But Tony was very good and talked me through my strengths so that I could use those to help the things that I struggled with. And also gave me some really good advice and said the best way to help yourself is to help others. Okay. And, and that yeah. set me on the advocacy path, so yeah. Do you have any advice for um, other adult women thinking of looking at diagnosis possibly? I think they really, it's a good idea to do because there's, especially with the NDIS now, there's so many supports available to a lot of people, not to everyone, but to a lot, and they might be one who can get help. It's really important to be aware of 
the phone diagnosis or online diagnosis. They're okay. cheap, but they actually don't mean anything, especially if you try to use it to get supports and accommodations. So people are actually giving diagnoses over the phone or online? Yeah, there's okay. one person in Australia yeah. who does it. It's <laughs> not good. Okay. <laughs> Very tempting, but not good. Yeah, I guess people, I, I can see how it might be tempting to want like a quick answer, mm. but I guess in the process of self-discovery, there is no quick answer. No, so. that's right, yeah. Um, I think one of the best things to do is to talk to peers and find out a good diagnostician in your area because a lot of people don't know a great deal about female autism. So you might be told no, and actually that, that's your diagnosis. Mm. So you do need to get the right person. And I don't know about you, but I learned most of what I know about autism from meeting other people yeah. on the spectrum. <laughs> on the spectrum, yeah. So how has that been for you? Do you have any advice about how to meet others on the spectrum? Well, there are lots of social groups around. I, my first contact with other people was through Channel Asperger online, yeah. Online, okay. Online, and there are lots of online groups as well, so Lonely Planet, good place to start. Great, so maybe start online? Yeah. You can find some people? I've actually met most of the people that I met online, so it's and okay. had real life friendships as well. So they start online, but eventually. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that you were hoping to take a pill and make everything better. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you've had success with recently that you used to struggle with? Well, I was about to leave teaching because I love the classroom, but I couldn't handle the um, collegial interactions with other teachers. It was just really overwhelming. And being able to say to people, slow down or let me think about that and tell them why mm -hmm. and have them understand made all the difference in the world. So I went on to become an assistant principal. Oh, okay. So it like really made a difference. Yeah. And also not to punish myself when I couldn't do things or when I had to take a break and other people were doing fine, just to say, well, that's how it is. So acceptance of autism is within yourself Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that you would like the world to know either about yourself or about autism? I, well, I think talking about autism is also talking about myself. So I'd like the world to know that if they give people, autistic people, a break, they can have really good friends, faithful friends, um, loyal friends, and just we can participate well in every part of society as long as we have the right accommodations. And often they're not very big. Yeah. So what's an example of small accommodation? Well, natural lighting. Natural lighting. <laughs> <So light. I> <laughs> yeah. You find the lights difficult? Not these so much, but fluorescence, yeah, I do. Okay. I've worked in a big office, you know those horrible offices with 100 desks, mm -hmm. and they let me put my desk near a window and put a screen around it. Okay. And just having all the visual stimulation cut out, I was able to work really well in that environment. Okay, well, we might leave it there, but massive thanks to you, Geraldine, for coming and speaking to us today. Okay, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to say. I was always terrible at what I'm supposed to say. My mum would always say, say thanks you for having me. I'm like, oh. I didn't the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this interview and I'll be doing more Aspie interviews as the year goes on because the best way to understand autism is by meeting real people on the spectrum. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you again later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for weekly content just like this one. If you'd like to get even more involved, you can join the discussion on social media or support me by becoming a patron. Finally, I value your time and you'll notice all my videos are ad-free, so please help me to cover what you want to hear by leaving me a comment and telling me what you think. So thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.